Good evening and welcome to the Lighthouse Church of Benton on this Wednesday night. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord this evening? Yes, amen. We welcome you that are watching on live stream as well. If you have any prayer requests, you can send those in during praise and worship and we will pray with you. We have a very special guest tonight. His name is James Worrell and he is going to be bringing his testimony to us. And I know it's going to be encouraging. I've heard a little bit about it. I'm excited to hear what you is on your heart to share with this church tonight. So we are so happy to have you here and your beautiful family as well.
He's an on time God. Yes, amen.
So stay with us if you're watching from live stream. We're just going to run through the rest of the service. My soul says yes to the Lord. Amen. <laughs> you know what? We're in a season when we read and hear about how Mary said, Lord, be it done unto me according to your word. And so whatever that word says, that's what God does. And he's faithful to do that. And yes, we're going to look what the Lord has done tonight. We've got Brother James Worrell here. We're so happy to have him and his family and friends. And Lord, we are looking to you tonight that the anointing of God bring forth your testimony and your word and show us what you've done, not only here, but on live stream, everyone who's watching. Listen, there is a move of God according to his word. And we, all we do is we get before the Lord and whatever his word says, we say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Let it be done unto me according to your word. That's great. So we're here tonight with great expectation, and we're thankful to the Lord that he's done wonderful things, not only for James Worrell, but for all of us. And we are here tonight to hear that word and that testimony. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God is good all the time. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So uh, before we turn Brother James loose, is there anybody here who has a word of testimony or anything you want to share with the group? Hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, we, uh, we have a hot pink basket. We don't pass an offering plate here, but we have a hot pink basket for tithes, offerings, missionary offerings. And so tonight, if there's anything laid on your heart to give, then uh, as we just stand, and we're going to take just a moment to uh, praise the Lord in standing and acknowledging Him. Are you going to play some? Also, if you are sewing into the pantry, there's tithing envelopes on the back of your pews. Just need you to write on the front of that what it's for, if it's for pantry or for missions or for the church. Uh, if it's for the church, you don't have to write anything. And um, so just a, just a reminder, just write on the front what you want it to go to so we can make sure that it goes to that, that area, okay? Okay, let's all stand and we're going to meet and greet. And then I would like to uh, sort of give some introduction to Brother James, and then we'll turn him loose. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved, saved a wretch like me. You know I once was lost, but now I'm found. like to see happy children in the house. Amen. You know, when we're gathered together in his name, he's in our midst. And when he's in our midst, the children are ministered to, 
the adults are ministered to, everybody gets ministered to who is open to him when he's in our midst. And he's always in our midst. So we're open to him. And so we thank God for him being here. And I want to introduce to you James Worrell. Back when I was living in Arkadelphia, we were having some uh, home Bible studies. Well, let me go back one notch from that. Uh, I was working as a landscaper at OBU, and I was bent over in a raised concrete bed one day, and I was busy on my knees working, and I had a cap on. And uh, I noticed a couple of feet standing up on that concrete ledge there, and as I looked up, I saw this student standing there looking at me with a big smile on his face. And it was James Worrell, and that's how we first got acquainted and then he started coming to the Bible study, and we got to know each other, and he's like a son to me, and I'm, he tells me I'm like a father to him. We, we just became close because he's in love with Jesus. He was in love with Jesus back then, and he's still in love with Jesus. And the Lord Jesus has done great things in his life. So uh, it's my privilege and honor to introduce him to you tonight, and I've told him just take his liberty and ministry completely. So we're here expecting from God. James, come right on. Praise thank God. Yeah, thank you so much. Whew. I'm so glad to be here <laughs> on so many levels. When I first came to the Lord, I came to the Lord at 19 years old. Uh, it was the summer after my freshman year at, at Washtenaw Baptist University. Yes, you can be lost as can be <laughs> at a Christian school, because I definitely was. Um, so I got had a radical encounter with Jesus. And if you remember in, in the parable of the sowers, it talks about there's, there's some seed that sprouts up real quick, but it never takes root. The word of God is our root. And this man right here sowed the word of God in, into to this soil as, as my root. And uh, so for that, I'm very grateful. Um, he discipled a, yeah, a handful or so of us. It was <laughs> kind of a revolving door at his house. And uh, he would take us college kids in and he, they'd feed us physically and spiritually and and uh, taught me to stand on the Word of God, which is one of the most valuable gifts that you can, that you can receive. Um, that's, that's how you keep your salvation. That's how you work your own salvation out with fear and with trembling. And um, so I'm very grateful for that. Uh, so Jackie, he had asked me to, uh, to testify uh, he asked to teach and also to flow in any kind of words of knowledge and, uh, and minister in that way as well. So he said, just take full liberty. So, um, but I want to start off, I want to introduce uh, my daughters and my two friends here. My daughters, Briley and Dove, will you stand up? Or you can wave. This is Briley, she's 12, and Dove, she is 7. And my friends here, Brittany and Miss Haley, if y'all want to stand up or wave. <laughs> There's some awesome, awesome people. And uh, so, I guess I'll just jump right in. Uh, we'll kind of share a testimony of something that I've, I've uh, walked through here this past year that hopefully will be encouraging uh, to everyone in here. Uh, and then I'm, uh, I'm going to share and kind of teach on uh, what's a life message for me. So it's it's nothing I had to go and sit down and study and find a scripture to follow. <laughs> but it's it's things that I've based my life on, uh, which is helps just for walking in the spirit. So, um, yeah, the testimony I'm going to share is this past June 5th of this year. I was with my youngest daughter, Dove, and I had an accident where I fell off of a zip line, and I fell 15 to 20 feet, 
off the side of a mountain, off a zip line, and died on impact. I was dead for 15 minutes. Uh, the Lord resurrected me through the faith of believers. There's a spiritual mother of mine there, uh, Bonnie. Um, Dove, my daughter, was the first one there rebuking death because <laughs> I've, I've raised my kids just to believe the word of God over anything else, over all else. So I'm really thankful that my kids, they've got to grow up seeing uh, for the last 10 years, just over 10 years, seeing miracles on a pretty much daily basis, almost every single day. Uh, so seeing thousands of miracles and um, really thankful for that. Jesus, he said, those who, he, he said that signs and wonders will follow them that believe. How many of you know that there's unbelieving believers out there? Like, when I started learning about signs and wonders, it, it, it frustrated me a little. And it should because I believed in Jesus, but I didn't see signs and wonders. They weren't following me, which says something about my level of belief. It says something about my own unbelief in my heart. It's not because Jesus is wrong and the word of God's wrong. If something's off, it's me, <laughs> I've learned. And it's never the word of God. It's perfect. Um, man, I kind of, is there water? Oh, okay, perfect, thank you. So, back to the testimony. So for about 10 years, I've been seeing, uh, specifically, I go after healing miracles. That's, that's just an easy one that Jesus said that all believers can, can do and operate in. And he said in, in Mark chapter 16, he said that uh, those who believe and are baptized, in my name they'll cast out demons, in my name they'll speak in new tongues, they'll lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. This is not just somebody who has the gift of healing. This is everyone who received the Great Commission. Who all received the Great Commission? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> we, we don't need a salvation message tonight. <laughs> so, June 5th, fell off a zip line. I was dead for 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, we think. Nobody had a stopwatch, so... Don't know the exact time. And my daughter, Dove, who, she was the first, she was the only one there who saw it happen. And uh, was the first one there rebuking death off of me. Uh, my spiritual mother, Bonnie, and a friend of mine, John, whose house it was at, uh, after she wasn't seeing me come back, and I was gray and blue, she went to go get them, which it took a minute because it was a real steep little mountain. She kept falling down it a couple times and had to go the long way back up the mountain to get me or to get them. They came outside. They, uh, Bonnie said that she, she felt death. I mean, which some of you may have felt that spirit of death before. By the time John found my body and looked back up the mountain, she said it was like he had seen a ghost and said, call 911. He's gone. So the, and, uh, and Bonnie said, no, he shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord because the word of God is true and the word of God, is, it, it supersedes our own thoughts and our own experiences. We can never lower our experiences or, or, or lower the truth, the benchmark of the truth to match our experiences. Your experiences will lie to you. But Jesus is the truth. 
they prayed me back. Um, John, he, he, well, he wasn't up there doing the, you know, chest, you know, uh, compressions or, you know, anything like that, but they prayed, they decreed, they declared, and John breathed a breath in me and I came back. I was unconscious, uh, and I had broken five vertebrae in my neck. I came to, I was not cognitive. I came to at the hospital. I, I didn't see heaven. I didn't get to see Jesus, light at the end of the tunnel. I didn't, I didn't see any of that because the Lord honored my prayers to him that if I ever die, I want to be brought back. And if I see the glory of God in heaven, I'm not going to want to come back. I believed it because I want to carry out Amen. every word that's written about me in heaven. Uh, how many of you know that there's book, there are books written about you and your life in heaven? Amen. And there, there are words over your life that only you can fulfill. They're unique to you. God puts it, it's our responsibility to hear those words and do war with our prophecies. So we have to, uh, we have a responsibility to carry out what God shows us and, uh, and, and believe on that word even when you can't see it, especially when you can't see it. If you can see it, how many of you know it's not faith? But God has spoken amazing things to each person in here that we have a responsibility to carry out and we have a responsibility to go after. We have a responsibility to trust in him even when we don't feel it, even when we don't see it. Um, I came to in the hospital. Uh, they, the doctors told me I was quadriplegic which and it didn't click with me. I mean, for like the first week, I mean, I knew that I couldn't move anything below my neck. Like I could wiggle a little something in my right foot, but uh, like it just didn't click with me. But when they told me, I was like, I'm quadriplegic, what? <laughs> no, I'm not. You got the wrong guy. And uh, first hearing that and realizing I can't move, made me go it, it, it's a tough pill to swallow but it was a pill that that also that I, I refused to swallow and uh, so I told my doctors I said they said well we got to tell you I said well I don't receive that word and of course they're like <laughs> we're way smarter than you uh, we've read lots of books <laughs> but they they uh I've got a better book and a greater physician at work. And I had a great medical staff and they helped a lot. And so I'm very appreciative to them. But um, they said, I may never move anything below my neck again or be able to function, you know, my four limbs. Six months later, here I am. <laughs> Praise God. And I'm still, I'm still walking out. I, like, I'm probably, I don't know, 90% there and still lacking some strength and, you know, building back from some of the fatigue and different things. But um, it, it's, uh, my doctors have said, well, you're, you're a walking miracle. I, I don't know what else to say, <laughs> which has been a, a cool testimony. One cool testimony I do want to share is this, though. While I was in the hospital... It never, you never have to stop. You never have to be, his word doesn't change. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know if I even shared this with you, Jackie, or not, but or I may have shared it with you and Barbara. I can't remember. But even while I was in the, the hospital and paralyzed and couldn't move, I would have doctors come through and nurses come through and, 
and uh, they come in, oh, my back is killing me. I, you know, just how people talk and they're, or, oh, man, I've got this headache. It's crazy. <laughs> and I'm sitting over there like, I mean, I can't even move. <laughs> I'm like, no, really, you got back pain? Oh, yeah, Mr. World. Yeah, it's, oh, man, it's a level eight. Oh, eight out of ten. Really? <laughs> His word doesn't change. I will still lay hands on the sick on their recovery, even if I can't lift my hand. Come touch. You see my left hand over here? Yeah. Come touch my left hand. <laughs> They're like, okay, crazy man. You know, <laughs> coming over and laying hands. And I said, watch this. In the name of Jesus, pain get out now. It's that simple. This is, this is what we all have. It's an authority we all have. We are rich. We have riches in Christ. <laughs> we have a bank account. Just, and healing is just one of many, many bank accounts that God's given us. But we have, we have a bank account of healing that Jesus has paid the full price for. And all we have to do is cash it in. <laughs> so I was seeing doctors and nurses and... Uh, staff, different people getting healed in the hospital from touching a paralytic. Does that make sense? No. Well, if he's such a healer, how come you don't just heal yourself and get up and walk around? You know what? It doesn't change. And, and sometimes, sometimes there may be a contending. Like, how many of you remember the Luke 18 woman? The widow woman. That widow woman, she, she contended she was going over that judge's house night and day, wearing this man out. And he was not even a good man, it says. It says he didn't fear God nor man. <laughs> this guy was a jerk. Like he was not a good guy. <laughs> but because she contended and she didn't give up and she wouldn't stop, your honor, <laughs> judge, please, please. I've got, because she didn't give up, she saw her breakthrough. And this was from an unrighteous judge. How much more righteous is our judge in heaven? So, a month and a half later, I'm still in a hospital bed and they're telling me, and I'm still, I'm in a wheelchair. I mean, for them to bathe me, if it's something outside of a sponge bath, they've got to pick me up in this big tarp like Shamu at SeaWorld. And I mean, it was not anything I ever saw myself doing. <laughs> but what, what's so amazing is, and, and some, of, some of this took more contending than the instant miracles that I was used to seeing. So if any of you are contending for something tonight, you're not alone. And I, I want to contend with you. And those in this room, we will all contend together until you get your breakthrough, until you get what God has for you. But at the end, I also want to pray for breakthrough, whether it's for healing or whether it's contending for something or, or whatever it may be. Because God cares. And he wants you to have that breakthrough even more than you want it. I promise. He's really good. So six months later, I'm walking miracle. I actually just went back to work on Monday after being on short-term disability. Um, <laughs> got back to work day one. My boss drove down from St. Louis to personally hand me a pink slip. <laughs> After 12 years with, with my company, with AT&T. And he said, he said, man, I just I had to do this in person, though. He said, I didn't want to just send something. And he just kept talking about, wow, what an inspiration. Look, look, how, look how you've, you've overcome and all this. Uh, he said, you have the strongest will of anybody I've ever met. <laughs> he's, he's like twice a year Catholic guy. And I said, well... I may have a strong will. <laughs> I think I do. <laughs> he 
and I may be may be a nut, but I'm screwed onto the right bolt. <laughs> and I said, but my strong will had nothing to do with resurrecting myself from the dead. I had no will. That was all him. In, in being, I had a strong will in not giving up and, and giving in to, oh, just get over it. You're quadriplegic. Quit trying. And a lot of people do give up, and, 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 I, and I, I wouldn't give up. I kept contending, like that Luke 18 woman. But um, what was so cool was that conversation. I ended up getting to lead my boss to Christ. <laughs> He's like, is it book? <laughs> and as I sat there with him, he says, well, I've got some news for you. And I said, well, let me tell you, Keith. There is nothing you can say that's going to wipe this smile off my face. And he says, I know. You're always smiling. You're always. Yeah. I, said, I was like, you don't get it. You don't get it. Oh, man. The guy that lives inside of me, he's amazing. He's really amazing. And the more I get to know him, the, the, the more joy I get, the more on fire I get the more peace I get. And, and it's, it's the Christian walk. You, your fire should never go out. It's like we see somebody on fire and we think, oh, you must have only been saved for a couple of years. You're not mature yet walking around like you're drinking pickle juice. And, and uh, now when you know him, when you're encountering him, he's infinite. And I feel like every, with every time I meet with him, my expectations are exceeded for the next time that I meet with him Amen. because I see something new and he's bigger. And, and we've all seen different aspects of God. One thing that's so beautiful, every single person in here, the Bible says it's been given to each a word. Every single person in here can, can get up and share something about God, a unique perspective about God that nobody else has ever seen quite like that. So uh, I'm going to move forward. That was, that's kind of the testimony. So, oh, I'm going to share one more thing too. So uh, I get the pink slip and I'm not worried at all. Like, I'm <laughs> really... <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I'm sorry to give you that bad news. I said, it's not bad news. He's like, I just told you, you lost your job. <laughs> and I said, what you don't understand is it's all rigged in my favor. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> I don't get it. No, you don't. You don't. Oh, man. So, uh, now I'll kind of move into a little more of the teaching, my life message. Mark chapter 16, if you have your Bibles, we can open to it. Oh, has it been? Would anybody like to read that? Or, well, you know what? I've got a microphone. I guess that would make more sense. Huh? Yeah, I'm going to read from the New King James. What, Dove? Can you what? Can you play with your balloon? You can hold it. Just don't make noises with it. Maybe y'all can play with it in the back or something. But let's, let's, we're going to stay on task here. Okay, Mark chapter 16, verse 15 through 18. Y'all with me? This is kind of an important verse. Who's heard of the Great Commission? It's a big deal. <laughs> it's, it's not called the Great Suggestion. 
red letters, and Jesus, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. So, okay, pause one second. Who in here believes and has been baptized? Okay, these signs follow you. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, which is a direct reference to demons, not snake handling. I'm just making sure nobody's pulling your rattlesnake out right now. No. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Those are some powerful signs. If I'm not seeing these signs in my life, guess who moved? Guess, who, guess who's an unbelieving believer? So it's, it's, this, is what, this is what we check ourselves with. It's with the word of God. So if there's areas where I'm lacking, where I'm missing, <laughs> missing out, I mean, this, is the, this is the gospel. Jesus, what he paid for with his own life on the cross was to see this stuff happening everywhere we go. An unbeliever, has anybody ever tried to argue somebody into believing in Jesus and it just didn't work out well? <laughs> I have a lot and it's never, it's never worked out well. I believe with a word of knowledge or with a miracle, healing, I think that's the quickest way, in which both of those are byproducts of walking in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Both of those are byproducts. They're tools. They're power tools. Like if you go build a house, man, with a rock and a stick, man, I'd much rather have a nail gun. Choo, choo, choo. I'd much rather have a power drill. Zzz, 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 zzz. Done. <laughs> he gives us power tools. So building that house can go up in six months to a year instead of 10 years. And that's what these, these gifts are. But the gifts have, have not much to do with your salvation. Your salvation is knowing him. That's different. That's what you're called to first. That's the greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. John 17, 3 says, Is this not eternal life that they may know you? Intimately, they may intimately, intimately know you, like a, a man you know knows his wife. In Jesus Christ, whom you've sent, so knowing God is salvation. That's our salvation. But the stuff helps us do the second greatest commandment, which is for everyone else. We'll jump up to Matthew chapter 10, verse 6. This is, this is another commissioning. More red letters. We pay attention to all the letters, but the red ones, my ears perk up a little more. No, but every bit of it, from every word, from Genesis to Revelation, it's the word of God. Verse 6 says, Go instead and find the lost sheep among the people of Israel. And as you go, preach this message. 
Heaven's kingdom realm is accessible, close enough to touch. You must continually bring healing to lepers and to those who are sick and make it your habit to break off the demonic presence from people and raise the dead back to life. Make it your habit. Whoa. You have received the power of the kingdom, so freely release it to others. I chose this other version, the, it was the, uh, the passion version. Because I liked how it talks about making it your habit, make it a habit, which uh, leads me into and my, my life mission and motto, like what does that look like on a daily basis? What is that? It's easy to sit up here in a church and talk about God, but then, or among believers, but getting around unbelievers, oh, what am I going to say? <laughs> Sometimes it can feel a little more awkward and strange until you do it enough, and then it's not awkward at all. <laughs> but, um, but make it your habit. Every day, stop for the one. God will put somebody in front of you every day. Stop for the one. Whatever it is they need. And for, for me, one of the, my go-to question uh, is probably one of two. Uh, I'll, I'll ask, you know, do you need prayer for anything? Like I was talking to a guy helping customer service uh, through the bank today. <laughs> Got to pray for him. He was touched. I was really blessed by it. But every day, stop for the one. The other question I like to ask, Briley, what's the other question I like to ask? As an icebreaker to minister to somebody, what's, what question do I like to ask people? I like to ask, do you have any pain in your body? And it's uh, a lot of people do. <laughs> a lot of people do. And we have the authority to make it go away. Uh, in fact, we, see, we saw a couple healings just today, didn't we, Bradley? What, share, will you share what happened? No? Yeah. So, so we, uh, she's, she's going to be shy. But that's all right. Yeah, first we... Uh, Oh, we were at Arby's drive through wasn't it? And what did that woman say she had? Shingles. Hey, get off your phone. I'm talking to you publicly. <laughs> she had shingles. Had shingles, and she had a little bit of pain in her body. It wasn't much. And we just taken just taken a minute and said, you know, do you, Oh, you have, I said, is there anything I can pray for? Yeah. Actually, I said, do you have any pain in your body? And she said, why do you ask? And I, I didn't even have a word of knowledge. It was just a question. But I know Jesus wants to heal. So we gra I grabbed her hand. We prayed, and I just commanded the shingles to dissipate and go. I mean, it's so easy. It's so easy. Shingles go, pain, get out right now in the name of Jesus. I take authority over you, get out. And in Jesus' name, be healed. It's that simple. So uh, we look up. I said, where's your pain? She goes, it's gone. And she's crying. Her eyes are just whelped up with tears at the drive through window at Arby's on JFK. <laughs> People are getting touched. They don't need to know my name. They don't need to know, they don't need to know anybody but Jesus. And that's Jesus. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. Jesus, he's the standard. He said, as the Father sends me, I also send you. Which means he was sent healing the sick. He was raising the dead. He was... And healing the sick is something he specifically did every place that he went. That's the one thing that I saw him do everywhere he went as I read the Gospels. Yeah. 
That's the one thing. So to me, it seems like a, a good one to, to choose. I mean, you could pick everything he did. <laughs> and the willing and obedient shall eat the good of the land. So uh, healing is something I go for a lot, and that's why I ask that question a lot, which there's no right or wrong way to do any of this. But uh, it's important that you, that you do. It's important that you, you minister. It's important that you pour out. It's important that you stop for the one and get your mind, get off your own self, your own problems, your own whatever you're going through, especially if you have problems especially if you're going through something. If you want a flow of the Holy Spirit in your life, you can't bottle up one end of the river. Either end. From what's coming in to what's going out. You, you have to keep the river undammed. Keep the flow going. If you cover up your tailpipe, that flow uh, of, of the, the air that comes in through your cold air intake in your car, your car's not going to run. If, if air's not coming into it and, or it's not, unable to come out the exhaust, your car's not going to run. We require a flow in our lives in the same way. And that's what stopping for the one helps us to do is release the flow the aroma of Christ everywhere we go, loving on people with healing, loving on people with just, and it, nothing even has to happen. Like, it, it doesn't have to be a word of knowledge and a, you know, a tumor falling off somebody's body for them to know that they're loved. And, and when you love somebody, love never fails. So I just, I really hope to encourage everybody in here just to see, to see that take place, to see that happen, to stop for the one. God will highlight somebody to you. Sometimes you may, just, you may be at a restaurant, you may be at Walmart, you may be at the gas station, and somebody's just highlighted to you. You're like, why am I looking at that person? Man, they're going to see me and think I'm just some weirdo staring at them. It's because your spirit man is alerted to them for whatever reason. Go find out what it is. It doesn't matter if they're a believer or not. And it's actually a lot easier to minister to, to non-believers. <laughs> it really is. I see more healings with non-believers than I do believers. And they're immediately, thank you. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> I didn't do that. Oh, who did? Can't wait to introduce you. God opens up amazing doors like that. So, um, yeah, the... the Man, what was the second healing we saw? Was that woman? The second thing we saw this afternoon, probably within an hour, was uh, I got a call from a friend, a Jewish guy that doesn't even know um, if he believes in God and all this, but he knows my story. And he's like, man, he calls and says, man, there's this lady and she is suffering bad. She's on her last leg and she's going to die. If nothing happens, nothing. <laughs> she's going to die. And she's in tremendous pain. And all of her organs have dropped. And anyway, I said, call her on three-way right now. And he did. And me and my daughter met up with him on the way home in a parking lot. We weren't there five minutes, were we, Bradley? Maybe 10. Probably five minutes. And Briley laid hands on the lady, on her hands, and just decreed and declared. Jesus, he didn't say pray for the sick. He said heal them because we contain that authority. So laid hands on her. Oh, she said that her pain, I, I like to ask people's pain level just so they can gauge it. And also just to make sure that it's all gone, you know, because Jesus paid for all of it. But so we asked, and she said her pain was above 10. If there was, she said if there was a number above 10, it would be above 10. And we, we, so we laid hands. And what would you pray exactly, Briley? Pain, get out, be healed in Jesus' name. Real simple. 
Anyways, the, the woman's pain dropped to a seven or an eight. So instead of going, oops, well, he didn't do it all the way, but thanks, thank you, God, for that. <laughs> Jesus paid for 100%. John G. Lake, when he sent out uh, those that he discipled, they shut down, uh, was it three of the five hospitals in Spokane, Washington? He said, go, go heal the sick and don't come back until they're healed, unless they're healed. Go after it, get it. Anyway, so we just went after it like a bulldog, and pain dropped to a seven, prayed again, I think she said it, what was it after that, Briley? Like a well, we prayed the first time. It went to a seven. Then what did it go to after that? To a two, and then we prayed a third time because it only dropped to a one. But we're not leaving any of it. Jesus never left anybody halfway healed. We're not to do that. <laughs> we're not to either. So it's something we can have. So I, I, I hope. Uh, I just want to encourage everybody just to active, be activated in that and to, to actively go after that, actively go after what Jesus did. And uh, it ministers to people. When they're left in tears because they're touched, all of a sudden they know who Jesus is. They know that he came and he healed them when they weren't even expecting it, but he heard their prayers, he heard their cries. And then people want to know him. People are drawn to him. They're like, man, he's so kind. Yeah, his kindness draws us to repentance. So, uh, I guess with that said, um, it's 818. I'm thinking maybe we can, uh, oh, yeah, going to just a time of, of just ministry. If there's anybody here that needs prayer for something, if there's anybody here in pain or suffering from something, don't leave with it because it's not for you. Um, I felt like uh, whenever I'd first sat down, uh, I, I felt like I heard in my heart a heart condition. Does does is there anybody in here with a heart condition? Three of you. Okay. Um, would you three come up here? And is there any physical pain or anything physical that you that you would know that it was, if we pray right now, that you would know that you're healed, like pain leaving or anything like that? or No? Okay. Uh, well, I'm just going to pray right now because I feel like the Lord said he's going to heal heart conditions. Yeah. So right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your children. I thank you for your son and your daughters. And right now I speak to, the, to these hearts each of these three hearts. I, I take authority over every assignment of the enemy coming up against these hearts right now in the name of Jesus. Every demon of hell assigned to, to attack these hearts, you're bound. And in the name of Jesus, hearts be healed. Right now, I lose the fire of God. I release the fire of God right now. Hearts be healed and be made whole right now because Jesus is king. Everything that's not supposed to be there, get out. And hearts, I command you to be on earth as it is in heaven right now. I thank you, Father, for making all things new. In Jesus' name. Just take a deep breath. Just fill them, Lord. Every cell of their being, fill them right now. Just release your glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You have pain in your knee? 
What's your pain level right now? Right now, seven. When I get up, it hurts the worst. About a seven yeah, right now? I can't sit with my knees straight up and down. All right. So we're going to pray for your knee right now. <clears throat> hey, who in here has never seen a miracle, seen a healing? Who? Have y'all, you've never seen a miracle? Come here. Actually, both of you come up. And we're going to put you on this one. What's your name? Jordan. Jordan? You believe in Jesus? You've been baptized? No? But you believe? Jordan, put your hand on his knee. And just speak to the pain in that knee. And just say, say, pain... I command you to loose them. I, you can't say, I command you to, loot, to let them go. It's okay. Just say, say pain, get out. Knee, be healed right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. And hang on, hang on, hang on. We thank you, Father, for no more pain. Check it out. Where are you at? And be honest. Where's the pain? <laughs> oh, give this man a hug. Isn't that cool? Did you know you could do that? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, he paid a whole lot so that you could do that. And you know what? You're going to be doing that the rest of your life. <laughs> How do you feel right now? It's pretty awesome, huh? All right. Praise God. And hey, and ma'am, you stay here. Who else has pain in their body? I know somebody else has some pain in their body. You do? Ma'am in the pink shirt, will you come back up here? It's your it's your it's your turn to. If if you don't if you don't want to, it's. You want to? Okay. I'm just I'm just showing you that it's it's not about an anointed man or woman of God. It's about the body. It's about the body. This is God empowers us as sons and daughters. Yes, ma'am. Lower back and left hip. Lower back and left hip joint. What's your what's your pain level in your lower back? On a scale of one to ten. Tens are worse, zeros, nothing. Great. Great. right and if you were to put a number on it right now you said it's it's pretty bad like if 10 is the worst what would you say Probably 10 yeah, so at this moment while you're standing is it a 10 or is it a 9 or 7 7, seven or 8 okay you ready well you're going to heal your entire school by the end of this week all right, so put your hand on her lower back. Yeah, and just, yeah. Tell that pain where to go. Go to the devil and forget it. That's right, devil, send it, that's right. So, and, so that pain left, and let's, let's, uh, and then command that back to be healed. Just say, back be healed. Back be healed. On earth as in heaven. And hang on. I want you to test it out. How's it feeling? Better. Better? Much. 
What's if you were to put a number on it now? What would you say? ML. It's about five, right? In the middle of that. About five. About well, if, lower back. if it went to a five, you know it'll go all the way to zero. It will. Because he paid for all of it. So what, what do we do? We pray again. Yeah. Yep. Man, you can, you can just say just say five. Five. Go to zero. Go to zero. Pain out now. Pain. Because Jesus is king. Jesus is king. Amen. Be healed. Yes, Lord. Amen. Uh, uh, uh. Now, tell her to check it out. And ask her where her pain level is. Still about a five. When I move it like that. So what do we do? We go after it again. Here's, I, I want to remind y'all of a story. Jesus, there was one occasion where he prayed for a blind man. And he asked the blind man, he said, so what do you see? And he said, yeah, he said, I see, he goes, I can see now, but and I can see people and men, but but they look like, trees so it, it wasn't all the way done and he had to pray twice <laughs> and I think that may be just for me in, in times like this when you don't see it the very first time but we owe it to everyone to pray at least twice if it took Jesus twice man I'm not better than him I'm going to pray at least twice for everybody yes okay can I put my hand on, on your hand and you can just, if it's in a you know place like that, mm-hmm. you can just say, you know, put your hand on top of their hand, and just say, say all pain, speak all, to that pain. All pain. I command you, I command you to let her go now. Let her go now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pain, get out. Pain, get out. And back. And back. Be fully healed and restored. Oh, boy. Because Jesus is king. And Jesus is king. And thank you for no more pain. No more pain. We thank him. Thank you, Father, for no more pain. In Jesus' name. So, what you help, though. Yep, check it out. Thank you, Father. Still some there? Oh, uh, so it's, it's kind of in your leg or your yeah. hip, but yeah. the pain in your lower back is that it's gone. It's gone. Praise yeah. God! Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for healing the lower back. Always thank Him for what He does. Yeah. Always thank Him for what He does. And so this pain that's some I call it jumpers. I don't know if that has a name to it, but sometimes. You'll see uh, the pain jump to different places, but it's all got to go. So you got your hand on it right now. Mm-hmm. You can just put your hand on her arm even. Say, pain, pain. I told you, get out now. I told you, get out now. Every bit of it. Every bit of it. Go. Go. Be healed, Be healed. In, Jesus' name. in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Yeah, check it out. Check it out. Okay, it's one more time. Is it, does it feel any different? It has moved. Yeah, where did it move to? Move back this way to. Okay. This way. Just keep it just keep your hand on it. I mean, when it jumps, sometimes you got to go after things. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you got to go after it. So we just right now we just speak to that pain. Jesus. 
Say pain, looser, right now. Looser, right now. Get out of this body. Get out of this body. Because Jesus is king. And he's paid for every every cell of this body. You, just, you only have to say all that. You can say, pain, get out. Pain, get out. Now. Now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Be healed. Be healed. Yes. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For no more pain. No more pain. Check it out now. Got a two. Mm-hmm. It's going in the right direction, isn't it? Yeah. What, what do we start off at? Um, eight. Eight. Okay. And now it's a two. All right. Did Jesus pay for all, all of it on the cross? He did, didn't he? So here, just put your hand. Did it move again? Did it jump again? Or is it the same place? It's the same place. Okay. Jesus all right. Name. In Jesus' name. All pain. All pain. Get away. Pain. Get away. Because we don't want you. We don't want you. So get out now, pain. Get out now, pain. Be healed and restored, body. Be healed and restored, body. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Where you at? won't be your last either will it it's pretty cool there's a remembrance of it is is it gone she said there's a remembrance of it so so does that what what is slight is that like a one or a half or like if you were to keep on that same (laughs) scale of how you how we've been gauging it? Um, it's still about a two. It's still about a two. But anyway, I'm. <laughs> but I'll go again. Father, we thank you for one hundred percent. We thank you that you paid for one hundred percent that you took 39 stripes with a cat of nine tails, that by those stripes were healed. So in Jesus' name, pain, leave. Right now, all the way, all the way, in Jesus' name, be healed. All the way to zero. Thank you, God, for no more pain, just because you love your daughter. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You're such a good Father. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Check it out. Has it changed in any since the last last time we prayed? On a, on a scale of one to ten, what is it? About a half. About a half. Woo! Half dissipate to zero right now. Right now. I thank you for all the way because you're an all the way God. I thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We praise you, Father. We praise our way to victory. We thank you, Father, for no more pain for your daughter because you love her and you said so. Thank you, God. Body, be healed. Stay healed. And pain, all the way to zero, out now. Thank you, Father. And we just cover her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, Father, right now, Father, with your glory, with the blood of Jesus, that you would just cover her right now, Father. Fill her, Father, to overflowing. Fill her cup to overflowing. 
In Jesus' name, we thank you, God. Thank you. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Should be gone. <laughs> uh, isn't Jesus amazing? Yeah. Isn't it amazing that he trusts us with this? Yes. And I want to pray for the live stream. Yeah. Father, I thank you, Father, for everybody watching this. Uh, everybody that's, that's tuned in online. Father, I, I thank you that you said whatever is bound in the heavenlies, whatever, we, whatever is bound on earth is bound in the heavenlies. Whatever is loosed on earth is loosed in the heavenlies. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I, I just pray for everybody on the live stream right now. I bind all pain. I bind every demonic assignment against everyone watching this in person or online, even at a later date. And I take authority over the demonic assignment against your life right now in Jesus' name. Be bound. Be bound. I cut it off at the root in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare the kingdom of God is here now. I loose your peace. I loose your joy in the Holy Spirit. And I loose your righteousness right now. In the name of Yeshua, shalom, shalom. We thank you, Father. We bless your name. And we praise you, God. Yeah. So bodies be healed and restored. Minds be healed and restored. I speak peace over minds right now. Someone's tormented in their mind. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of a sound mind. So I take authority over all torment right now. Be bound. Cease and go. Thank you, Father. And I just lose your shalom. And the love of the Father, I thank you, God. I thank you, and I bless you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Does anybody else want prayer for anything right now? Is there? Good? Okay, come on. Oh, all right. Yes, ma'am. And you're ready just to not suffer in that lower back. Right. Um, uh, w w what is it specifically? Is it just just back pain, discomfort? Yeah, it's just it's more like a, a sharp pain. Okay. That is just kind of a constant. It, it almost feels like like bone rubbing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just in my very lower back. Okay. And it doesn't always do it, but for instance, I've had to switch around the different desks at my job and that's been in the last three days it's so so even over the last three you, days it's been especially bad and you've had to right. get different desks and different chairs right. at your job even wow so it's been just been irritating. really irritating and and discomfort mm -hmm. on a scale of one to ten what's your name by the way Shelly Shelly yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you yeah. and this is Haley and Haley knows how to lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. Wonderful. So, Haley, ask Miss Shelley. Say, Miss Shelley, what's your pain level on a scale of 1 to 10? I would say about a 5. About a 5. Okay. And she said it was in her lower back. 
So say, Miss Shelley, can you mind if I lay hands on your lower back? Right, so here, put your hand right there on her lower back. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, Haley, say, all pain. All pain. I, command you to go. I command you to go. Back. back. Be, healed. Be healed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Thank, you, Thank you, Father. For no more pain. No pain. Say, Miss Shelley. Shelley. Check it out. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Still hurts. Still hurts? No, it's okay. Don't be sorry. What is it? Is it on a scale of one to ten? Where is it? It's still the same. Still a five? Yeah. Okay. So what do we do? We pray again. Okay, put your hand right there. Just say all pain. We evict you from this body. We evict you from this body. Right now. Right now. We command you to loose her. We command you to loose her. On the count of three. On the count of three. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. Go. Go. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. We curse all inflammation, we curse all inflammation. And, anything out of place. and anything out of place come in alignment right now, alignment right now. With, the word of God. with the word of God and be healed, and be healed. In, Jesus name. in Jesus name we thank you for no more pain thank you father for no more pain yeah. There it is. Woo. Come on. There it is. <laughs> yep. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. <laughs> it's it's astounding the authority that God's given us. He's given us so much more authority than we realize. He's entrusted us with a lot. <laughs> And what's so cool, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you. It's you abide in him, and his word abides in you. So it's you in him, and he in you. Is there anybody else that needs healing? <laughs> Please. <laughs> oh, I, we found one more. Come on, girls. Yes, sir. More hunger for God. Yes. Does this stir your hunger? Yes. Okay. Praise God. Well, the Bible also says that we, we lay hands on and we, we stir up the gifts in you through the laying on of hands. So why don't, why don't all of the, the apostolic people in the church, whoever, and let, let's all lay hands. What's your name? Philip. Philip. Oh, Philip. <laughs> What a name. Let's just all lay hands on them and let's stir up those giftings. Let's, and that hunger is going to be stirred with his gifts. When you were a kid and you knew you had a gift under the tree or you're at your birthday, you see those gifts and you want them. And he has gifts for you. Amen. It's your birthday. Father, we thank you for Philip right now. Father, we thank you for restoring this man, restoring his heart, restoring his hunger, Father. Yes, Father. Thank you, Father. And we just we stir up the gifts in him, Father, right now through the laying on of hands. And Father, we thank you, Father, just from the top down, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. We call him blessed. We call him blessed. We call him blessed. We call him blessed. We just release the glory of God right now. Fill him. 
fill them. Fill Philip. Fill Philip right now. Just, just take a deep breath. Fill every cell of his being. As he breathes in this air, Father, I ask you to fill even the air with your pneuma, with your wind, with your spirit. Fill. Fill to overflowing right now. Fill them to overflowing in the name of Jesus. More, Holy Spirit. More. 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 More, God. Never the same. Never the same from this day forward in Jesus' name. You will never be the same. Because you've asked... Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That Philip's never the same, Father, from the inside out. A hunger that only grows. Never never dwindles, never dissipates. Let him gaze upon your beauty all the days of his life. And dwell in your temple, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Mm. Yeah, fire of God. Burn out all the chaff, all the old ways of thinking. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Oh, bless my brother, God. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I gotta have a hug. Oh, that's so good. I'm next. Oh, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> uh, that tormented mind a while ago, that was mine. Yeah. The tormented mind was mine. I have a torment of, and I've held it for a while, of not being good enough. And it's not me, it's him. Mm-hmm. So tonight I don't want that thought, I want that spirit gone. Gone for good. You know what? In all you're getting, get understanding. So what I want you to understand, let me ask you a question. Is is God a fool? Is he foolish? No. Only a fool would overpay for something. If I was to go buy my truck outside and somebody said, yep, that's going to be a million bucks. Well, I can tell you my truck's not worth a million bucks. Uh, Pretty sure there's probably not a truck on the planet that is. If I was to pay a million dollars, that would be foolish, right? God bankrupted heaven, all of heaven, for you, and He didn't overpay. Amen. Amen. No, he didn't overpay. He's not a fool. All that heaven has, he spent on you. So you're worth it. He didn't overpay. You were worth his son. He's restoring you. He's redeeming you. And Father, I just just pray right now, God. I thank you, Father. I thank you for the love of the Father. I thank you for consuming my brother. And I thank you, Father, that you say he's worth it. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. I thank you. And I love you, buddy. you father that your love never fails and the father just says son you're mine you're mine and you're worth it you're not trash you're you're worthy you're worthy I'm not a fool I didn't overpay for you I know 
våra barn. Buy the whole field for that one pearl. <laughs> thank you, God. I thank you, Father. And I thank you, Father, just for peace in his mind from this day forward. That all trauma, all torment, I break off. Actually, it, it already left. It already left. Thank you, Father. And Father, we just seal his mind with your peace. We seal his sleep with your peace. And I thank you, Father, that he's worth it. In Jesus' name, you're his son. You're his son. And he's well pleased with you. And I also heard him say, you're forgiven. You're forgiven. If there's something you've been struggling with, and look me in the eyes, he says, you're forgiven. And what I've called clean, no one can call unclean. You're forgiven. Thank you, Father. Amen. It's so good. All right. So this box of tissues for me, Jackie. Uh, okay, I'm done praying. Hey, buddy. What would you like prayer for? For nightmares. Oh. So you've been, you have, you've had nightmares. Is it every night? Is it the same thing all the time, or is it different all the time? Or? It's kind of different all the time. Okay. What's your name, Bubba? B-R-E-Y-S-O-N, Grayson. Grayson. Okay. Well, guess what? Did you know that Jesus, yeah. he, he, he gave me the ability, the power to make that stop? Yeah. And all we had to do was ask. And you know what? He's given you the same power. And you're going to have friends at school. And you're going to come across people that may also have bad dreams, that are tormented in their dreams. And you're going to stop their bad dreams from happening. Haley, you want to pray? All right. Okay. Well, Haley's going to help me. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, go and put your hand on it. Dove, you want to pray too? Come on. Y'all put your hand on his head because he has dreams at night. And he's had bad dreams. So the enemies tried to torment him in his sleep. All right. So, uh, so girls, y'all just just say every tormenting spirit. Every tormenting spirit. I cancel your assignment. I cancel your assignment. From this day forward. From this day forward. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Bad dreams. You will, you will cease. You will stop. You will That's stop. what that means. Right now. Right now. Right now. From this day forward. From this day forward. In, because Jesus is king. Because Jesus is king. So we bind peace to this mind. So we, bind so we just we put we mind. put peace on this mind. We put peace on this mind. And we thank you for good sleep. From this day forward, from this day forward, say Grayson, Grayson, you're gonna sleep like a baby. You're gonna sleep like a baby in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Can I have a hug, buddy? Oh, oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. You're awesome, Grayson. From the time I walked in, this young man came up and said, "Would you like some water?" You were so kind, and you were such a good host. And you know what? I think the whole body of Christ all over the world could learn a lot from you. <laughs> Jesus, I'll leave with this verse, and then we can all go home. And uh, My daughter's got finals in the morning, so she's ready to go 
go study. But uh, Jesus, he said, he said, I came not to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Man, thank you guys for having me out tonight. All right, everybody stand. Have you received? Are you taking it home with you? Amen. Amen. All right, are you ready for your blessing? Here we go. I'm blessed. I'm blessed, I'm blessed in the city and the field. I'm blessed coming in and going out. And everything I put my hands to, my hands to God, causes God causes it to prosper. Our children, Our children shall marry the right person the first time. At the right time. Our children's hearts and minds are open to receive knowledge and wisdom and the powerful word of God and speak it forth. I am a light. I cannot be hid. I am salt of the earth that causes mankind to thirst for God. I'm full, filled up and running over with health, wholeness, completeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. And we give all honor and praise to God in Jesus' name. We give all honor and praise to God in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you Sunday morning at 10.